Hello and welcome to College Football on Air. I'm your host, Carl Moline, who's excited. I know I am. I have the greatest guest in the world lined up, and uh, I will introduce him in a minute. But first, let's go over social stuff. Social media stuff. Of course, Twitter is a great place to find me, at Carl underscore BM. It's Carl with a K. If you spell it with a C, don't spell it with a C. Please, please, I beg of you. It's with a K, not a C. Carl underscore PM on Twitter. Good. Uh, then National Sports is also on Twitter at National Sports 1. Not 2, not 3, not 0. I think it's also all caps, but I could be wrong. Jake Liker will help me out later. Uh, in other social media news, we also have a Facebook. National Sports is on Facebook. And that's a good thing. What else? National Sports is on Facebook. National Sports is on Twitter. National Sports is at Instagram. And I believe that's national underscore sports. I could be wrong against that, too. We're going to check all of this with Jake Liker when he comes on later. Uh, other shows I do, 50 State Sports Update, as well as In the Creek with Carl Mogulheim, which will start up in a month or so. Probably less. we got NHL to talk about, people. It's, it's exciting times. Um... Other than that, there isn't much. Uh, leave me a comment in the comment box if you want me to answer a question. If you don't, I do. If you don't an ask it in the comment box, I will never know, and I will never answer your question. Uh, other things to do. Yeah, that's about it. We are going to welcome in our guest. The man whom I have spent more time talking to in the last week than anybody because we did, like, three NFL shows. It is the man, the legend, the NFL guru who really likes the Chiefs and said the Colts would never lose at home. Well, guess he's wrong. It's Jake Liker. Man, Carl, these introductions you're giving me not selling me short at all. Yeah, I know. You do pick. You do think the Colts will never win at home. You never lose. No, I did. I didn't see this coming. I know. All I'm saying is this: I picked Kansas City to win tonight, and that's happening right now. I went for 13 for three last week, and I was not the one who said that Cal had a shot at beating Ohio State. We are going to that later. Please, please let our random inside the show jokes wait until later. Um, actually, I was gonna start with the recap, but I really want to talk about one thing before we go to that. Uh, it's it's talking about College Game Day, presented by your favorite department store, the Home Depot. Uh, it's it's going to a very, very special place in my heart. Fargo, North Dakota. Delaware State is playing North Dakota State, and that game is going to be on ESPN 3. No, you cannot see that game on normal ESPN, but College Game Day is going there because they can. North Dakota State is the team that beat Kansas State, last year's Fiesta Bowl loser, and, um, yeah, so North Dakota State gets college game day. Who's excited? Jake Liker, are you? Uh, sure. I mean, okay. <laughs> Listen, it's North Dakota. There's not much to do there. I think it's actually really cool that they're doing this because in small cities, like, take Green Bay, for example. I'm biased, but just hear me out. Fans flock to the stadiums, not just because they're diehard football fans, but because there was absolutely nothing else to do. So I think we could have actually surprisingly fantastic turnout in Fargo, North Dakota. I'm guessing at least one-third of North Dakota is there. And all people in Fargo will be there. That is my bet. Everyone in Fargo. Every single person who li who is in Fargo at the time will probably be there. I guess you could say that's pretty... Far-fetched. That was not a good joke. I, that was the point, Carl. You know what else wasn't good? Your pick for Ohio State. You know what else isn't good? Yeah. Speaking out of turn, before we go on to talk about every single game that happened last week, in a word, oh, okay, all the ranked ones. I'm not actually going to take you through Oregon State and oh, Utah and OT because that was pathetic-ish. Or Stony Brook. Lost to Buffalo in five OTs. These are the things I know. I'm not sure why. Uh, let's go. I'm going to say a game. 
you know, score. If anything happens, you know, what not. Uh, and then, Jake Lecker, you're going to give me a word or a cup, couple words. I'm not going to make you go one. But, you know, word, couple words. Please do not give me too big of sentences. Here we go. Going down the list. And I will be skipping games because those are the ones we're going to talk about more later. Uh, TCU, 24th ranked, is now 1-2, and two, and they lost to Texas Tech. This game was 20-10. to 10. Texas Tech had a lead 10-0 in the first quarter, and then pulled out 10 points in the fourth to kind of take this game home. Uh, what are your thoughts? Thought. Uh, my word is epidemic. Uh, it's what's striking college football, uh, all football, college or pro, Dropping the ball before you get into the end zone. That's really what I took away from this one. Remember, if you want to score a touchdown, bring the ball with you. That is a great point, and you also used your words very nicely. I'm very proud you have a good vocabulary, Jake. Okay, next game. A game that I have no bias to whatsoever. Actually, I do, shockingly enough. Marcus Mariota threw for 456 yards. As Oregon won 59 to 14 over SEC opponent Tennessee, Oregon didn't even score in the fourth fourth quarter, but they put up 28 in the second. Jake Laker, your word. Next. I mean, who didn't see this coming? To be honest, I mean, let's face it. I couldn't agree more. It was a honor. Actually, it wasn't because it's was really fun to watch them score really fast. But, um, yeah. Uh, next game is that we're going to talk about now. Stanford won 34-20 to over Army, closer than it should have been. A score of 13-20 to at half before Stanford pulled away in the second half. Uh, word. Salute to Army for putting up a good fight there. And a shout-out to all troops defending this country. I mean, you have to throw that in there. Yeah, we're patriotic people here at College Football on Air. Next, Louisville beat Kentucky 27-13. It was 3-3 after the first quarter and only 10-3 at half, but Bridgewater doesn't let these things get in his way. Uh, What is your thought? Why? As in, why did Teddy Bridgewater only throw for one touchdown? That was a very, very good point. Why did Teddy Bridgewater only throw for one touchdown? Kentucky's not that good at all. At all. Ooh. They're worse than Tennessee. I want. I would love to see Oregon play Kentucky. That'd be really funny. All right. Uh, Kent State. The they they didn't do very well against LSU. Thirteen to forty-five. Up twenty-one at half. LSU kind of put on the gas a little bit, and uh, Mettenberger actually had a good game, so that's something special. Uh, what are your thoughts that LSU completely walloped Kent State? Flashy, because it was flashy play that brought down the golden flashes. Oh, that may, that's one of the, that's one of the better names, nicknames. Uh, ooh, Florida State, number 10, 62 points, Nevada, unranked, 7. Um, my word is effort, because that's all I can really congratulate Nevada for. Ooh, guess what? Before this show, me and Jake Liker always like to talk to each other about random college football stuff, because this is basically what our life is, football, obviously. Not, you know, school or politics or anything like that. Um, so, here we go. This is a rant you would like to do, so I'm going to open the floor to you, Jake. Uh, please have your rant on Winston's girlfriend. It's not a rant. It is not a rant. I'm just saying that, uh, Winston... No, I'm not gonna do this because I'm gonna end up sounding like a creeper like, uh, what's-his-face did on college game day. Uh, oh, what's his... Oh my god, no, don't tell me. Musburger, right? Yes. Good job. Yes. I mean, that was creepy, man. So, I am going to be careful here. All I'm saying is that Jameis scored 62 points in the field, but he is also proving that he can score off the field. That is a very, 
very good thing, um, because we care about his off the field things, apparently. Well, you know what? This is a thing that's worth caring for. Let me tell you. This is my okay. This next game is my favorite game ever. Maybe Akron. 24, Michigan, ranked 11th, beater of Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish, 28-24, to stopped Akron within the five twice. Michigan had to score a very, very late touchdown to even get ahead in this game. Jake Laker, just tell me what happened in a word or four. I was gonna have a great pun for the action zips, but I couldn't think of one time. I wanna say, uh. I'm gonna still go with how this time. As in, how in the world could this have possibly happened? Um. No way, this game should have been close. Uh, Akron could have become Appalachian State, but Michigan was barely able to pull away with it. See, oh, but by the one. We did mention best game. Zips is up there. One more thing. Zips is definitely up there. Uh, our next game. Yeah, but the top. Hey, wait, 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 guys, um, top name in the country. If we're talking about great college football names, you cannot go on without mentioning the UL Lafayette Raging Cajuns. But everybody okay, knows that one. I everybody knows that one. That's everybody's favorite, so it doesn't win as much points apparently. Uh, going on. To our next game, which is obviously very exciting, because Oklahoma State scored 59 over Lamar, who had three. Um, just do I even need to to talk about this game? Please, just give me a word so I can move on. The word is no, as in no. You don't need to talk about this game. See, I feel like you're extending your words with another sentence. I'm 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 gonna allow it. All right, next game. Oh, I can't just say- Yes, you can. Uh, next game. Vanderbilt proved they're still not that good, losing to South Carolina 35-25. to They put up 15 in the fourth, and that's the only reason this game even looks close. Alrighty then. Jake Laker, tell me about this game in a word or four or five or three or two or none, if you can somehow convince the nation in one or zero words. Go. Jar Jar Binks, uh, because if the SEC was Star Wars, Vanderbilt would be Jar Jar Binks. I can accept that. Moving on to Tulsa, putting up a valiant effort, putting up 20 against 14th ranked Oklahoma, who scored 51. Yeah. Uh, Blake Bell threw for four touchdowns. Um, would you like to explain the Blake Bell situation, or should I? Okay, Blake Bell basically was a favorite coming into the year in the quarterback competition at Oklahoma. This is me talking really fast about Blake Bell. Blake Bell then lost the job to... I can't remember his name. Do you remember his name? I forget who he lost the job to. Okay, I'll get on that right now. You continue, though. All right, he lost his job, and now he has his job back, and he, in his first start, he threw four touchdown passes against the obviously very strong... The, the mean, the green, the fighting machine, the Tulsa Golden Hurricanes. That's that's a good name, I gotta say. Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Alrighty then. I'm going to... See, I would move on, but now I really want to know the name of the other guy. And Jake Liker's being very, very slow. I, I, I haven't... Then I tell me the name! Right. Tell me the name, please. Tell me the name. You know, if you keep, if you stop asking me to tell you the name, I can tell you the name. Okay. So do you want another name? I want the name of the quarterback who originally won the Oklahoma starting job. Alright. Uh, uh, it's... Uh, Trevor Knight. Thank you. I knew it was Knight. I knew it was Knight, but then I... That was Chad Knight, and Chad Knight's the kid who played for Connecticut at the Little League World Series. Um, yeah. 
So, that's what happened in Oklahoma. Now we can move on, which is good, because I was stalling there. But Tulsa Golden Hurricane, good name. Uh, next, Western Michigan. The Broncos losing 17-38 to at 17 Northwestern. <sighs> Your word, please. All the great names we're going with tonight. This is a less known one. The, uh, the Western Michigan Chippewas. Wait, Western Michigan? This is Western, not Central. Oh, not Central. My bad. My bad. I blame you, Jake. I blame you. Um. All right. Um. Now we're gonna move on to uh next game thing. Yes. All right. Again, you really thought that they? You gotta. Be knowing your teams. This is Western Michigan, not Central Michigan. If Central Michigan was here, no, I would I have thought, a... I thought you said Central Michigan. Well, now you need to listen better. Good. Now we know. All right. Washington, ranked 19th, 34-24 over Illinois. Huh. Isn't that nice? Is it? Uh. Yeah. Yes, um, because it looks better for the Pac-12. It does. We had a really strong weekend. The Pac-12 had a very, very strong weekend. There's another argument behind that one. All right, next. Okay, our last game before we go into the ones we're going to go into a little more detail on. Ole Miss 144-23 to at Texas. Ole Miss was ranked 25th. At the time, and is now three and zero. Oh. Texas is now one and two. Uh, this game at half was twenty three Texas to only seventeen Ole Miss, but twenty seven unanswered points in the second half gave Ole Miss a big win in Texas at uh, Austin. So, uh, give me your final word before we go into more detail on some other games. Long. Because this season is going to be as long for the Texas as their horns. Yeah, that was a good pun. Thank you. Alrighty then. Now we're going to go into games. Alright, as we go into our long games, the first game i got to talk about... <sighs> Sigh. It's the game that disappointed me. The only Pac-12 team that lost out of conference. You guys all, all of you who listened last week will know who this is. Ohio State won. I should note, by only 18 points, they were only up 11 and a half. They won by 18. Ohio State beat Cal. Now, Jake Laker, the word, say I told you so. The word is... The word is only. As in, this is not only 18 points. But you said the word was only. So you need to say not only. I didn't. I said you could have up to four words. You really need. All right. Jake, we need to work on your listening skills. Only use three in your face. Yeah, I can accept that. All right, moving on. Okay, next game to talk about. We're going to talk about Arizona State versus Wisconsin. That was fun. Uh, Arizona State, they play Wisconsin. Do you want to know what happened? Well, hopefully a lot of you know what happened. Uh, I'll give you the score. I'm going to give the score, and Jake Liker will explain what the heck happened. Arizona State, 32. 20, Wisconsin. 30. Jake, explain. So it was 32 to 30 was the score. Arizona State was beating Wisconsin. Time was running out. Wisconsin got down the field. 15 seconds left. They're in field goal range. The quarterback, so they're at the right hash. They want to get to the middle of the field, so it'll be an easier field goal kick. And they have a timeout left, I believe. At this, yeah, at this point, they have a timeout left. So the quarterback, what he does is he comes to the middle of the field, and he kneels, kind of. Instead of kneeling, though, he just puts the ball on the ground. So they're saying that he gave himself up, and the game should be over. Now, meanwhile, the clock is continuing to tick. There's confusion going on. Arizona straight ties to Carp for the ball because they think it might be a fumble. 
that's not the case. So that kind of cleared up. There's five seconds left now. Before Wisconsin can spike the ball, they have to have the referees spot the ball. The referees were taking their sweet time, and before they could even spot the ball, Wisconsin could spike it. Time ran out. The Pac-12 referees have caught, um, have caused Wisconsin a win. So big sympathy for the entire state of Wisconsin. The second year where they get screwed over by refs. This is so frustrating to me. Wait, Tampa. I have to make a point. Third year in a row. They that was not a touchdown that Michigan State threw. In three years ago, with year Wisconsin was playing against Oregon in the Rose Bowl, they played Michigan State, and on a Hal Mary, Michigan State th- threw a deep ball, and it did not cross the end zone, but they called it. I'm just saying. I'm just saying it's three straight years. Yes, no, no, no. This is just unfair because you have guys out there who work so hard. This is what they are dedicated to. They at least are supposed to have a chance. And when referees cost the game because they're moving too slowly, it is just so unfortunate and unfair to these players who work their hearts out. And it is absolutely shameful that the Pac-12, I'm not liking what the Pac-12 has done. I have direct TV, for example, and the Pac-12 decided to have the Pac-12 network. Now I can't watch a bunch of the games. They want me to switch from direct TV, which I have no intention of doing whatsoever. So that's just some things. But the big problem is, of course, the infamous Pac-12 referees. This is a football conference. The priority should be football, not saving money. Because let's face it, you don't need to save money. Get the guys, the best guys you can, even if you have to pay them more. Because this is unacceptable. This is a mockery of the game that is giving you this money. It is shameful and a heartfelt apology to Wisconsin. And again, I'm not saying that Wisconsin necessarily would have won the game. I mean, they could have missed a field goal. Who knows? But when games end like this in such a fiasco, it's heartbreaking. And especially in college where if you lose one game, you may as well have lost any chance of having a national title. Could you imagine if this was in Alabama or Ohio State or Clemson? The nation would be in outrage, but because it's a small team and not as big a game, no one's as frustrated by it. Luckily, the Pac-12 went ahead and reprimanded these referees, and I think they're suspending them. But still, this is absolutely ridiculous. It's pathetic. It is shameful. It is absolutely shameful. Okay, now I have your opinion on that. Let's move to another game. Notre Dame won by one touchdown over Purdue. They were trailing 10-17 to going into the final quarter, but pulled it off. This is a game I had picked as an upset. And I think it came through as the possibility of the upset. So, I, I'm still not saying I made the wrong pick. Uh, just looking. Uh, Tommy Reese threw three, for 309 yards. Uh, big day from him. A couple touchdown passes. Uh, and then you go into a box score. Uh, Notre Dame scoring those three touchdowns. The first three touchdowns of the quarter. Uh, putting themselves up 31-17. Uh, before Purdue could pull back into seven. Uh, this game happened. I, I still don't like Notre Dame. I think they'll stumble soon. Jake Liker, tell me what you think of Purdue and Notre Dame. Especially, I want to know what you think of Notre Dame. Whatever is the word. Because neither of these teams really has a shot. I mean, maybe they'll get a winning season. It's a rebuilding year right now, both these teams. Uh, I wish Purdue had won this game so the nation could realize that Notre Dame really is struggling and, you know, a lot of this ranking comes from pure prestige and nothing else. Boise yeah, State effect. Not, not, big deal. not much to take away from this game. Alright, um, so that that's what happened in that game. Our next game's See, now we only have three games, no, two games left to talk about, just to talk about them. And they're two very, very good games. One 
you have more personal connection with, one has more of a national connection. Let's start with the one that, of course, has a much more personal one. UCLA coming back uh, from 18 points down to beat Nebraska, of course, the first game after UCLA wide receiver and freshman Nick Pasquale passed away in a car accident. Uh, 41-21 was the final score, and after the game, Nick, uh, Jim Moore, excuse me, had a very emotional interview saying to Nick's parents it was for their son. They had towels with number 36 on them. It was altogether a very, very emotional game for UCLA, but also a, a very, very good rally from this team, rallying down, rallying from when they were down, and coming back to win big. unbelievable for me to say like it's still a lot to process for me UCLA has a shot at making a BCS run that is true the way this team has played the way this team has played the way they perform in the second half in the face of adversity and pressure and a difficult opponent and a large lead to break down it had all the elements of the odds being stacked against you, and they powered through. Like, I believe. I mean, I knew we were going to be better this year. I knew that Hundley was talented, but this team could go the distance, and it's exciting. I mean, it's early in the season. There's a lot of things that Los Angeles is focusing on, but the buzz will start to grow just as it did with the Kings when they won the Stanley Cup. I am Shocked and very pleasantly surprised here. But I also want to give a shout out to Nebraska and how accommodating they were. And their students had a nice little tribute to Pasquale, you know, threw up some yellow and blue balloons into the sky before the game. So I really appreciated that. This was a great game and this was a statement win for UCLA. And now I'll tell you how it goes Saturday night because I'll be there against New Mexico State. I expect nothing less than a blowout. I've just I have one question for you. Why are you going to watch them play against New Mexico State? Because we just need some tickets and unlike everybody else in Los Angeles not every unlike many in Los Angeles, I'm not a fair weather fan and I go to as many games as I can. I can accept that logic. That's very and, good logic. And this is also the first home game you see I will be playing since Pasquale died. It'll be very emotional, and it's something you feel like you, know, you need to be a part of. I am a Bruin. It's in my blood. I can, the, the bloodline for me in UCLA is actually it's ridiculous. I won't go through it because it could take up a long time. He's a purebred, people. He's a pure. Yes, I am. Bruin till I die. I really feel the need to go out there support this team. And it's, I mean, you're from Oregon. You're an Oregon fan. We're not used to having our football team dominate. So when we have the chance to see them score 60-plus points, we're going to take that chance. All right, I just want to say something about Oregon football. The thing is, being an Oregon football fan is very interesting. The past four years of Chip Kelly, uh, those were the four years I was most into the Ducks. Uh, I really... Because just one, I was getting old enough to really be into sports and stuff. I'm not into sports, but like into following them. But Chip Kelly, what he did, he had seven losses over four years. Mike Bellotti previously had never actually, he took them to a Fiesta Bowl and a very high ranking, a win in that game. I believe they got up to number two that year. He had Dennis Dixon come through and almost win a Heisman. Uh, he had Joey Harrington, Joey Heisman, as he was known until he once again had an injury this is a school that has been building up since those days in the 80s and the early 90s and all those times that Oregon was that team that was mediocre. And you got to look at the one play, which is the 1994, uh, the pick against Washington, Oregon, probably would have lost that game, wouldn't have gone to a Rose Bowl, and you could think that none of this may have ever happened. So that's the life of an Oregon football fan. You, there's more to it than what is on the surface now, because there's so many years of hardship. Uh, that's my thing. That's my emotional thing. 
But uh, I also should note about UCLA, if they beat Stanford, there's they're almost guaranteed. If they beat one, either Stanford or Oregon, there's a very high percentage chance they make a BCS Bowl. So, yeah. To our next game. Alrighty then. Uh, well, hi, we have to talk about this for I wouldn't we say no. le- I wouldn't say legal purposes, but yeah, maybe I don't know. I think it may be we illegal. Well this this may be illegal not to talk about. Uh, Alabama won forty nine to forty two in a touchdown fiasco. Not fiasco, bonanza, bonanza. I need to get my vocabulary straight. After Jake Liker bro- drops all his big vocabulary words, I get kind of scared, and then I... Vernacular. I prefer to call it vernacular. You're vernacular. I don't care. Uh, Johnny Manziel threw for 464 yards, five touchdown passes, although he did have two interceptions that many people say changed the outcome of this game. After last year, he had no interceptions, so that was big. Uh, Texas A&M came, came uh, so, so close... But in the end, they could not do it. Uh, they really fell behind after they pulled up 14-0, and then Alabama put up 35 unanswered points. So they kind of dug themselves in a hole. A.G. McCarron threw for 334 yards, four touchdown passes, a QBR of 93.8. Then you look at T.J. Yeldon, who had a big day on the ground, 25 carries for 149 yards and a touchdown. Uh just add Johnny Mandel another 98 yards on the ground. So, uh, that's what happened in this game. I know your opinion on Johnny Manziel is not high. Please, Jake, tell us what you think of this game. Oh, God damn it. That's what I think of this game. Because I was rooting for Alabama to win so we could teach this Johnny football punk a lesson. But no, he comes out there and performs like no Nobody's business. 500 plus yards. All the touchdowns against one of the best defenses the college football world has ever seen. But fine, if he's going to do that, then at least have them win. And number one, still one. This was a double whammy for me. But at least maybe we can put Johnny Football in his place. Uh, credit given where credit's due. He performed. I mean, he, he earned some respect. I have never doubted his talent on the field. It's off the field that is just so annoying. And uh, I think he could take the lesson from Bill Belichick's book. Somebody please give Johnny Manziel a slice of humble pie, because not even the Alabama Crimson Tide were able to do that. So I was disappointed in more ways than one with the outcome of this game. Alright, Jake. Uh, One, it proved that Alabama's defense was Penetrable, which is very nice for me. But two, I have a trivia question for you. What school before Texas A and M did Johnny Menzel recruit to? Was he committed to? Hmm. Was it a community college? No, it was a it was a BCS school. BCS school. Was it in the Big Twelve? I'm not giving you hot and cold. Guess I've answered both your trivia questions on your show and got them right. So you, I'll give you a hint after you guess wrong. I don't know Oklahoma. Wrong conference. Wait no, no, not Oklahoma. Wait, no, I know this one actually. Yeah, someone told me. Hold on, give me a second. You're looking it up, aren't you? I would never do such a thing. I actually have honor. Who do you think I am, Johnny Mansell? Really, really, you went there. You went yeah, there. I did go there. I absolutely went there. Oh my god. Listen, I have to figure this out. We're not moving on until I figure this out. What, what was his name? The, what, not what was his name. What was the college's name? Do you uh, want a hint? It was not in the no. Big 12. Not the SEC. Uh, was it... Darn it, I don't know. It's a West Coast if it, school. If it, if, it was, if it wasn't a Big 12 fan, and this is your show, considering you're biased to Oregon, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to say Oregon. You are a brilliant, brilliant man of deduction. Good job. 
Wait, are you serious? Yeah, he was committed the same class as Marcus Mariota. They were actually friends in an Oregon QB camp. They still are buds. Um, yeah, Mariota and Manziel were coming in the same class for Oregon. Manziel had said he, although if Texas A&M ever did recruit him, he was leaving. So, yeah, he kind of held up to his promises. I can accept that. Uh, so Johnny Manziel left and Marcus Mariota started. Fun fact about Marcus Mariota. Only started his senior year of high school. Um, yeah, odd enough. You gotta wonder who was the guy ahead of him. Uh, so yeah. I think it's time for top fives. Yay. Cause we've kind of finished talking about last week. Alright. Um, as always, let's go talk. look at the polls of supposed knowledge. Um, do, 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 uh, today we are going to, uh, use the AP poll because we don't really like the coaches poll. Actually, for top five I'll go over both because I can, you know, I can use them both. Why are these guys are supposedly knowledgeable? Because somebody who apparently has a brain decided to look for Oregon to be number one in each of these polls. Now, I don't know what it takes for you to vote for Oregon over Alabama. Because Alabama proved their worth this week. Yep, you would have they proved 42 insane. points of worth on their defense. You, do you know what? 49 points for offense, so... They yeah, but Texas A&M's defense, you cannot say, is the superb defense. Uh, they won. They beat number six. Who'd Oregon beat? Tennessee? You know, I don't know why they're called the Volunteers. <laughs> because they volunteered to give the other team a free win. Okay? I'm sorry, but anytime you beat an SEC school... Who has, has been to bowl games recently? I'm not talking about Vandy or, like, Ole Miss or anything like that. Actually, if beating Ole Miss by this much would be impressive. But, like, I'm sorry. 40, 45 points over Tennessee. That's impressive, especially thinking I, about the last... No. No, it's not. Tennessee shouldn't even be part of the SEC. They should have, like, a minor league. They should have a Pop Warner version of the SEC. <laughs> Just made especially for Tennessee and Vanderbilt, and that way they can actually Wait. have some sense of confidence. Does Kentucky get to go there? Does Kentucky get to go there, or does t Kentucky has to go lower than that probably? No, Kentucky gets to stay because they have a decent basketball team. <laughs> yeah. That's a logical point, I guess. Actually, Vanderbilt's not that bad at basketball. And Ole Miss has to stay because. That's where Michael Orr went, and Sandra Bullock's gonna cry if we send them there. <laughs> That's a logical point. All right, let's look at top fives of AP and US. I should note, I really want to. If I have one question to Mark, ask Mark Helfridge, it'd be where does he rank Oregon? Because he does have a vote, so I really want to know if that number one's him or somebody else. Honestly, with him, I don't think he would rank them one. Would Helf you rank them one? Helfridge is humble. We're not to that part yet. Stop trying to do stuff. It's let's go over the top I have five. Great insults for you that I have to give right now. No, you don't. No, you get to wait a few minutes to insult me. All right, USA Today poll. This is the coaches poll. Stanford number five. Clemson number four. Ohio State number three. Oregon number two with one first place vote, and Alabama with sixty-one first place votes is on top. Then you go over to the Associated Press Top 25 pool. Stanford, number five. Ohio State, number four, not three. Clemson's there. Clemson's at number three. Oregon with one first place vote. And Alabama has 59 first place votes. Jake? I just want to point out that combined in those two polls, Alabama has 120 first place votes, and Oregon has two. So in Unless you want to tell me that 122 people who for a living, or well, at least part of it, is ranking college football teams, if you want to tell me that they don't know what they're talking about, you've got nerve, Carl. Nah, I can... But, alright, here's what I'm going to say. Oregon is actually... Ga 
Oregon actually had no first place votes at the beginning of the season. Now they have one in each poll. So, yeah, they're picking them up. Uh, here we go. Let's look at uh, this. First, Jake, please give me your top 25. My, my top 25? Not fi- 25. Top give me tw- five. If all you right. gave me your 25, it would take three hours because you need to explain them all too, too much in detail with your vernacular. Vernacular. Good for you. Uh, uh, I'll be very quick here. Five LSU, four OSU, three Clemson, two Oregon, one Alabama, the AP. The AP hit it pretty much on the nose this week, um, except it says Stanford, I'd put in LSU. I don't know why LSU is not getting some respect. They're getting treated like they're in the SEC Pop League. Whatever. All right. Um, We're going to go over, okay, we're going to go over my first three teams first, and then we'll go in my top two. Five, Stanford. Four, LSU. Three, Clemson. Notice, Ohio State, not in my top five. What? Oh, my God. We've been over this. We've been over this. I don't think Ohio State's a top five team. They're not a top five team. They're not top five. Deal with it. Okay. Good. Who's All right. Number two team? Okay, here's what I'm going to ask. I need you to be silent for at least the amount of time I say until I say I'm done. You get 10 seconds. Ten, wait, for both teams or for one? 10. 9. All right, I have Alabama number number 2, Oregon number 1. I had Oregon number 1 last week. They're not moving because they won by 45 points or whatever. They're not moving because they won by that much. It doesn't make any sense. Carl, you are insane. Did you realize this? Okay, okay. You just told a 120 out of 122 professional killers. Whoa, whoa. Two, uh, hey, half of those were coaches. Because Oregon was able to beat Tennessee. Eh, eh, shababa. I'm sorry, but I'm not moving my rankings because they won by 45. No, you're not sorry. If you were sorry, you would change your rankings to something that's, oh, I don't know, logical? Alabama just beat number six Texas A&M, who was led by the defending Heisman winner and most polarizing figure in all college football. They gave up 500 yards plus and still won. What else do you want, Carl? Them not to give up 500 plus yards to a single player. Uh, I'm not moving Oregon because they won. Just deal with it, Jake. Deal with it. No, okay. I will not deal with it. This is a mockery. This is why you are not a polar, and these people are. Okay, so I have 120 people on my side, and you have two on your side. I don't know what you were thinking. I, uh, blasphemous. I will go Stephen A on you. That is how strong I was born. This is blasphemous. This is asinine. This is a disgrace to the good people who poll for a living. Nick Saban deserves at least 75% of your respect. You're killing this with the Stephen A voice. You're killing any credibility with your Stephen A voice. Uh, I haven't done it in a while, man. But you know what else also hasn't happened in a while? Alabama not being ranked number one. And there's a reason for that. Because they're the best... Dude! Dude, they weren't ranked number one after the last week. Dude, they weren't ranked number one like four or five weeks ago if you skip this season. Like, like week 12 or whatever. No, I'm saying... Hey! Shh! No! You're saying it's been forever since they were not ranked number one. They were not ranked number one last year when Notre Dame was ranked number one. Year. One year. Last year. Here's the keyword. When's the last time Oregon was ranked number one? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's right. Okay? So, uh, Jake, 120. Carl, two. Give me a year. Actually, no. Give me... Nah. Give me until November, what is it, 17th, I believe? Actually, it may not be November 17th. Excuse me. It's somewhere around there. It's late November. 
Uh, now maybe it's October. October 17th. Uh, something very special is happening then. You want to know what's very special and that's going to change people's minds that's happening then? What? Do you? Do you really? I'm making sure. Yeah, tell The, oh, awesome. excuse me, it's November 7th. They're playing Stanford. Happen, They're playing Stanford. I should note, yeah. this is a week and a half after playing UCLA. But no, but they're they have a bye week between. Uh, I, Carl, don't talk to me about losing credibility when you are putting Oregon number one because two months from now they're going to beat Stanford. I'm not saying that's why they're number one. I already gave you a bunch of reasons why they're number one. Because they beat Tennessee by a bunch of points. This is oh my God, Carl. You don't you drop teams because right they lost. I mean, you don't drop teams because they win by forty-five. Okay, I want anybody who is listening right now just to comment either Oregon or Alabama. If you comment Oregon, you are likely from Oregon or have an affinity for the colors green and yellow. And guess what? I'm a Packers fan. I like green and yellow. But I don't let those two colors blind me from, I don't know, logic. Yeah, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Uh, I I really wish people could see me sometimes, just so they could see how much I roll my eyes. Um, I I still, whatever. You know, I'm just gonna move on because there's no way I'm ever gonna give in to you that I'm right until right. Actually, no, if Alabama loses, you'll shut up. But absolutely good. Uh, listen, hold on. Wait. Okay. Wait. This is not a question of who is the better team. We've I've clarified this for the third week in a row now. Okay? I'm saying that when a team is a two time defending national champion and is currently undefeated, they have given you absolutely zero reason to keep them out of number one. And whoever does is clearly biased and does not know how to look at things in an impartial way. All right, and you want to hear my? Do you want to hear me say what I have to say, or do you want me to just start insulting me? No, no, go ahead. I don't, I don't, no, I'm you Here we go. I'm trying. No, here's how I rank my teams. I rank my teams on how I think they're gonna do this season. I rank my teams on who I think the best teams are, not what they've done last year or the year before. I rank them on how they are this year. This year, Alabama is a two-time defending national champion and undefeated. Why is Oregon better than Alabama? Tell, tell me this. Why is Oregon better than Alabama all of a sudden? All of a sudden? I thought this all year. Look at what one Alabama has lost. Alabama has lost a bunch of key pieces to the draft. Their secondary looked absolutely awful against Johnny Manziel, a player very comparable. And they won. And yes, but Oregon's defense is better than Texas A&M's. Extraordinary. Oregon has the best secondary in college football. Are you telling me that Oregon could give up 500 yards plus to Stanford and still win? No, well, mainly because they wouldn't give up 500 plus yards. And, um, if, yeah. if, if they hypothetically did. Do you really? Well, Oregon could put up 600. So you know what? All right, fine. I just want to show you some things about Alabama's schedule. One, they got a really weak uh, schedule this year because they have like their next game, Colorado State. Then they then they have Ole Miss, who, while they're a team that's not that bad, they they they're not a strong team. Georgia State, Kentucky, Arkansas, that Tennessee team. We'll see how that compares. Then, this is the one game left on their schedule that I think makes a difference. They play at LSU. And that is November 9th, two days after Oregon has played Stanford. That is a huge, 
huge game. Absolutely ginormous. All I'm saying is that Alabama has given neither me nor 100 of 122 major polls in this country any reason not to vote the number one. The facts speak for themselves. All right, whatever. We are completely not going to agree on anything here. So we're going to move on to next week because we can. Before we go into the twenty top 25, we're going to go. My personal favorite non-AQ team is Fresno State, and they're playing Boise State. Uh, the I would kind of the marker for mid-major teams. So... We will see how Fresno State does. I think Fresno State will win this game. Jake, do you have any reason not to think that Fresno State will win this game? Yeah, I got two reasons for you. First one's Boise. The second one is State. State is not a legitimate reason, because Fresno also has a state in it. Yeah, but that state does not contain the blue football field. That state just contains Raisin Parade, so what not. It's true. Um, yeah, whatever. They lost... No, 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 okay, I have this. No, no. I'm being harsh. I'm being harsh. Uh, Fresno State could possibly do some damage. I will I will admit that. I just don't see it happening quite yet. I don't know these two teams as well as others, so it is entirely possible Fresno State wins this game. I just like Boise State because Boise State prestige ranking. What prestige ranking slash liking? Boise State can play. Oh, you want to talk about liking someone and giving them a rank? How about giving Oregon number one? Did you not listen to yourself quoting Sheldon? So shh about this topic. We are <sighs> past it. We were talking about this week, and we're going to talk about the game that happened tonight. Because Clemson played NC State, and they won 26-14. to uh, It was it was probably much more distant than the 12 points stated. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what I have. So, uh, what do you think that Clemson won? Not that hard. Clemson is good enough to beat Alabama, and therefore, they are certainly good enough to beat Oregon. They would beat Oregon by at least 10 points. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa. 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 Do you really think Marcus Mariota holds a candle to Taj Boyd? What do you think of Johnny Manziel compared to Taj Boyd? Johnny Manziel is as good as Taj Boyd. Marcus Mariota is as good as Johnny Manziel. He just never gets to play for quarters oh because Oregon's always God. off the field. Carl. Carl. Marcus Mariota is as good as Johnny Manziel. No. Wait. Yeah. Listen, I don't like Johnny Manziel. And if I could pick a quarterback for my team, I would pick Marcus Mariota. But Marcus Mariota is not a husband winner. Marcus Mariota, would, he could not even dream of throwing 500-plus yards against mm-hmm. Alabama. Oy vey. It, it's not even... Yeah, you want to know why? Because they're not just a pass offense, either. They... They're... Yeah, yeah, I know. No, no, no mercy, but... Okay. My third and final point that is going to win me this debate is that Marcus Mariota does not have chicken quesadillas named after him. I rest my case. One, I would not be surprised if he has some food that I mean... I mean, I'm back to Boise State at Fresno State. It's at Fresno State. They're not on the blue turf. I, I, you know I'm, I'm fine. If it makes you happy, I'll pick Fresno State. It does if make me happy. You admit that there is at least the tiniest bit of bias going into you picking Oregon number one. You, you're so biased, I'm not even going to talk about this. Fine, Boise State's going to win. Alright, we have our bias. I'm 
I'm sorry. I'm still thinking. I picked the Vikings to lose, and they lost on a last second play. I mean, I'm in, I'm in never pick against team mode. Just accept it. You picked the Redskins to beat the Packers. I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah, you said the Dolphins would never ever beat Indianapolis. I went 13 for three last week. What did you do? I didn't actually pick my teams in that set, so you know what? Well, you know how we can find out if you listen to episode seven of Rookies Roundup. It's actually a pretty good show that I it is. Least I think it is. Uh, you know, at some point I had to bring this up. Yeah. Uh, as many people were listening to the last two episodes as the others, and I don't know why, so I'm going to assume that it was bad internet connection and the weird lightning going on in Seattle. Hopefully we have some sort of fan base up there or whatever. Just don't give up on us. We haven't given a reason to. Oh, um, just like Alabama hasn't given anyone a reason to give up on them. So, yeah. We will hopefully be broadcasting Saturday afternoon and then doing another rapid reaction Sunday night. Okay. I have to throw that in there. Rookies round up. Spread the word. Continue. Uh, we're going on to next week and actually talking about real games. Except we're not, because I need to find real... Next week is a weak week. Week? Week. It's a week that is very weak. Uh, Tennessee is playing Florida. I want to see how Tennessee fares in that. To kind of stick, you know, see how measuring stick, Oregon. Uh, Purdue is playing Wisconsin. Wisconsin should win that game pretty easily. Uh, again, it's a really slow week. Alabama's playing Colorado State. Uh, that is the return of Alabama's former, what is it? I believe it's offensive coordinator, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's Jim, Mi- I always mispronounce his name. Jim McElwain, something like that. Uh, basically, he was the fo- he was used to be at Alabama, so they're coming back, but it should not be a close game whatsoever. The line is at 39 points, and it's probably going to be covered. Uh, Texas A&M is playing SMU. Probably won't be close. Alright. Uh, Auburn is playing LSU. Again, LSU should have this game. No problem. But and Oregon is off this week. Hmm? It would not be far-fetched to say that Arizona State has a real chance of beating Stanford. I didn't even get to the game... I didn't even s- introduce the game and you started jumping the gun. Please. I could help it. I mean, come on. What do you want me to do? Talk about Miami and Savannah? Okay, here we go. So, Miami's going to play Savannah State. Now, my prediction is that Miami is going to win by no less than 60 points. This is the same Savannah State team that lost to Florida State. What was it, 79 to nothing? Somewhere like that, yeah. Alright. Alright, continue. I'll, I'll wait my turn. Auburn is paying LSU. LSU will probably crush them. Michigan is playing Connecticut. Connecticut lost to Towson. New Mexico State is 0-3 and UCLA is 2-0. and And Jake Laker will be there. Now, one, don't jump the gun on this. Two, let me intro the game. And three, those one and two are basically the same thing. 23, Arizona State coming off of a win, a controversial win from the refs in Wisconsin. And number five, Stanford going at it. This game is in Stanford in Palo Alto. And uh, please, please tell me about your lack of shock. Um, this sets up pretty interestingly. There are certain games good teams will play that can set them up. For upsets. The game Stanford played against Army is one of those games. Because they did not play well enough to have this be a convincing win. But they did not play poorly enough for them to really kick it to overdrive and make sure, uh, be, better make sure this doesn't Like game. Michigan and Akron. No. They're not going to yeah. kick into Michigan? No, uh, Michigan, no, Michigan's game was uh, close enough so that would be a wake up call for them. Stanford's game against Army was not a... It's like Army set an alarm for Stanford. And the Cardinal didn't really hear it. You know? They hit snooze. No, they didn't hit snooze. Because it was still someone with a close game. But forget the alarm uh, metaphor. I'm 
saying that there is a real possibility Arizona State could win this game. In the end, I'm going to pick Stanford, but I'm going to only pick them by four points. Okay, then. I pick Stanford as well. Uh... I don't know. I, I don't believe in Arizona State. They've been hyped up too many times before for me to truly believe in them. So that's why I don't. Uh, other than that, you can say uh, not a lot. I think that that game will probably be... I mean, it may be within 10 points. I think 10 points is probably the max it'll go up to. Probably closer to 6 points. Stanford wins. So it's a close game. And Arizona State, if they win it, it wouldn't be the you know the biggest shock I've ever had. So yeah, that's that game. Uh, all right. The one thing I'm gonna do, I have a couple more things. Actually, I have one more thing I know we're gonna talk about in the show. And Jake, please, I'm opening the floor for a quick, you can say what you want segment. Say, bring up topics other than ones we've already talked about. This has to be college football. Yes. I don't know, because there is an interesting landscape going on in football. Oh, I know. I think we need to talk about the Oklahoma State scandal and how shameful, what a shameful exhibition that was of absolute, complete disregard for logic, humanity, what is right, a it, it was. it was such a debacle. If you read what happened in the Sports Illustrated article, the things they did to hire escorts to convince Oklahoma State players that, oh no, recruits, if they attend Oklahoma State, they will have more active relationships and whatnot with girls to keep it PG. To go so far as to do that, to boost revenue for a football program and to win is shameful. You are only hurting these players for your own benefit. Look at the two best players from Oklahoma State when they were number two and lost to Iowa State. Justin Blackman and Brandon Wheaton. How are they doing in the NFL right now? Not very well. I look at this team I, and I root for them. I look at this program as a whole. This is an athletic program that has gone through many hardships. This is the athletic program. Um, maybe you've heard of Remember the Ten. Is the traffic plane crash that killed, um, I believe, like a scout and a player. And then their women's basketball team's plane crash coach actually nearly ten years later took the day. And then you go to the football landscape, and it's so completely different. No moral compass at all, to the point where it's almost scary, the things they did. Covering up test scores. Like the boosters and the money, like, you know, that should be the worst thing they do. Right? But when you go to, you're not helping these kids. You are hurting these kids. They came to college. They should get an education. They should not be given escorts to convince them to go to this program. It is despicable and absolutely reprehensible the actions that took place in Oklahoma State. And I liked this team. I root for their, I root for their football program. I still like their basketball team. But now I have just lost all respect when money Greed and power and winning is the sole focus that you are willing to do despicable things to get there. It is downright disgraceful and shameful. And if I was an Oklahoma State Cowboys fan, I would be disgusted. And it's not fair to the fans either because they can't go around wearing their orange with pride because their reputation has been tarnished 
yeah. it's just shameful. It's shameful that people would do this sort of thing. What are, you, what are your thoughts, Carl? I, I don't know what hasn't been said in what you've said so far. I'm You've covered so much. This is an action that I can't look at and say I'm I'm at all not disgusted by what they've done in this football program. Oklahoma State was a team you could root for. They were kind of the younger brother to Oklahoma. They were the team that almost did and then lost to Iowa State. This is this is a very sad moment for this football program. A football program who finally looked like they're going to get up. But now almost definitely will face a bull ban or serious, serious repercussions from the NCAA within, by, by next year I would not be surprised if they already have their repercussions out, but it's the NCAA so actually never mind, in a couple seasons but I would, in two years, I, I doubt they'll be playing in a bowl but, but, I mean there is something that I didn't like about this piece in Sports Illustrated and it's pointed out here uh, with, uh, I think this website called Think Progress or by a guy named Travis Waldron, actually, this morning at 10.49 a.m., basically saying that the problem with this was that he targets Oklahoma State and not the NCAA. The governing body that is the National Collegiate uh, Athletic Association, if they really want to find this, they could have cracked down immediately. There is no excuse that this should be happening right under the NCAA's nose and aren't busted for it. So, for all the punishments the NCAA doles out that aren't deserved, the one time when action needs to be taken, they come in way too late. Reprehensible. Reprehensible. Because there was something missing. This fascist Oklahoma State, and it doesn't say a single bad thing about the NCAA. The NCAA plays a role in this, and that role is really their lack of a role. It's that they are not able to operate efficiently, and they're so hypocritical. In the times when they are needed the most, the time that, this, that there is an NCAA governing body, they just turn the other cheek, they don't look hard enough, and then this happens. Absolutely no reason that things like escorts and boosters should be mentioned in the same sense as college football recruiting. I mean, money, drugs, drugs were everywhere, academic fraud, sex, scandal, it's all horrible. But when there is a big scandal going on, the police or the army, you know, the police are the ones basically in charge of finding this. If there is a, like a murder committed a block away from a policeman on duty, the policemen should at least have some criticism made at him, you know? The NTA is a governing body. They are here to do a job. They run it very poorly, and the one time that they are needed, they can't come through until, once again, it's too late. It's Reggie Bush all over again. And now what are they going to do? Vacate their wins and say, oh yeah, those wins actually never happened. They did happen. And they happened with drugs. They happened with inappropriate off-the-field relations. They happened with boosters. And you know I'm getting a little repetitive here. But it just drives to a point that the Oklahoma State is not the only person at fault here. It's the NCAA once again proving that they cannot run efficient and sustainable love. Alrighty then. Um, a hard way to follow that, and I guess I'd want to follow it on a lighter note. It's time to check in in the Capital One Mascot Challenge. Oh, yes. I know, it's so exciting. Alrighty then. F starting out, uh, let's look at the standings so far of the Capital One mascot challenge it's the standings so far all right C currently we'll start at the bottom bucky badger wilbur the wildcat cam the ram mike the tiger and the oregon duck all are zero and two baldwin the eagle of boston college michigan state's mascot sparty 
Big J of Kansas and Raider Raider Red of Texas Tech, Smokey of Tennessee, and Hokey Bird of Virginia Tech are all one and one. And there are five mascots that are two and zero. Oh. And I should note that none of these are actually from successful football programs. Monty from Montana, Rocky the Rocket from Toledo, Rocky the Bull from USF, Big Red, one of the best mascots around from Western Kentucky, and PD the Pirate from East Carolina. He's he's so inspirational. Just warms your heart. PD the Pirate. It is ninety percent to ten percent. He is beating the Oregon Duck right now. It's ridiculous. PD the Pirate. He he's got to be the favorite going in through the rest of the season right now. Yeah, you know, I mean, much like Alabama, PD the Pirate has given us absolutely no reason not to rank him number one. You would have to be absolutely insane to pick someone like Monty from Montana to pick number one. And, you know, I'm going to say, like, oh, this is just a random number here, of course. If you asked 122 people, at least 120 of them would agree with me that PD the pilot is absolutely number one in this case. And this has absolutely nothing to do with what's going on with Oregon and Alabama. Oh, no. No, not a thing. Uh-uh. No. Uh, uh, just one more observation. If Baldwin the Eagle wins this, I'll be very disappointed because I think this means that Capital One is rigging all of this. And that just because their main sponsor shares a last name with the first name of a college mascot, they will win. Okay? I would, and I... he will be renamed like Alec Baldwin the Eagle or something. <laughs> so, if Boston College wins, uh, this is rigged. And it's almost as fake as picking Oregon to be number one. You know how many digs... I'm going to count next time, or I'm going to go back and listen and see how many digs you made about that. Shots fired. And you know what? They deserve to be fired. Oh, whatever. Um, Other than that, Rocky the Rocket making a strong performance from Toledo. Personally, my favorite is still Big Red. Big Red of Western Kentucky. Uh, He's currently losing to Monty the gri- from the Grizzlies of Montana, please go out and vote for Big Red. He deserves all your votes. No, no, that, that's what you think. Uh, I still, well, uh, I think Raider Red still looks kind of cool. Although, uh, yeah, he he worries me though. He's he. I don't think he has the ability to go the distance. Yeah, here's the thing though. Like he's pointing his hands out like like guns, you know. And imagine if that was the mascot in Iowa. Do you know that in Iowa, blind people are now allowed to own guns? That makes so little sense. We're not talking politics. It's not politics. It's just an interesting fact. I saw in a... Look, we are talking about a mascot challenge. We are literally comparing costumes right now. I just want to make one interesting comment here. Uh, yeah, I like Western Kentucky. It's a uh, big red. Because he's just a big blob of lovableness, you know, it's like it's like Clifford the Big Red Dog had a deformed baby and <laughs> Big Red came out It's actually Clifford's egg please be respectful He's a dog, dogs Ignorant. don't have eggs. Clifford the Big Red Dog does. How would you, how would you know? I have my ways <sighs> Okay Too much information, Carl Uh You know what's funny? I'm pretty sure we're going to leave on Clifford the Big Red Dog Eggs. You know what? I mean, imagine... This is great, because now we can make all these inside jokes, and it'll give you another excuse to... Alright, I'm just going to list the inside jokes from College Football on Air and Rookies Roundup. Please watch both shows, because otherwise you just get really confused. Alright, College Football on Air, uh, let's go. Jokes we have on the show. Hispanic community of Oregon, the whole state... Of Northern Iowa. Not that's not region. It is a region. That's the third time you've disrespected. It is Ali Farouk Manesh, Michael Humana Wanui, and now Clifford the Big Red Dogs deformed baby, Big Red of Western Kentucky University, as well as the entire cities of Oakland and Jacksonville. Did I miss anything? Uh don't think so. Why I feel like Jacksonville is allowed to be disrespected. Tim Tebow rally. 
No, I did not. Okay, so it turns out Jacksonville, some people decided that they want Tim Tebow to be their quarterback. And when Tim Tebow left Florida to the BCS National Championship, one of those years, he had, like, the Bible scripture 316 on him. So it was at 316 p.m. Uh, Jaguars fans would rally outside Everbank Field to get Tim Tebow to come in. There was camera crews and everything. A whopping five people showed up to the Tim Tebow rally. That's not even including about 15 members of the media. Well, um, kind of like, okay, what the heck is this? Um, so, yeah, you can't even organize a rally for Tim Tebow. I don't even know anymore. I just don't even know. Again, I still think they should move to L.A. I do too, man. Listen, I'm an L.A. guy. I want the Jaguars to come here. I want MJD and Mercedes Lewis, the local kids from UCLA, to come back and play in front of their home city. I would love that. You know, can we just get a different coach and different quarterback and different logo and different name? And just you just with everything except for MJD and Mercedes Lewis. All right, I've got the plan. You know what's going to happen? Farmer's Field. No. You want to know how it's going to happen? How? It's, it's kind of obvious. What L.A. sports group wants to spend large amounts of money on sports teams and includes a former NBA star? No, 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 no. Magic Johnson and the Dodgers are not going to get a Los Angeles football team. Although, for, um, Roger Goodell did say that if there was a team in Los Angeles, he would favor Dodger Stadium becoming a football team. I don't know. It's too frustrating for me to talk about it. Right now, I'll just have to stick with playing as the Los Angeles Aftershocks on Madden, which, by the way, I've led myself to be 7-0 and behind Christian Ponder after benching uh, Michael Vick. So, get the chance. Look, He's not a bad fantasy back. quarterback because he has good stats. I mean, it's, he, it's his decision-making, which is bad, and you can change that in video games. Well, no, because it's my decision yeah, and yours is... My decision-making, as shown by my decision to put Alabama as number one and Kansas City to beat Philadelphia, is apparently impressive, so... Apparently. Well, thank you, Jake, but I think it's time for you to go. Uh, uh any any final words? Uh, sure. Again, uh, listen to Rookie's Roundup. Uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. Uh, Carl, I'm glad you were impressed with my vernacular, and just somebody, anybody, if you can say something to Carl, that he is absolutely insane for thinking Oregon's better, uh, should be higher ranked than Alabama. So, uh, my pick, Clemson is better than Oregon, and Ohio State is still going to win. And why'd you rank Oregon number two? What? You ranked Oregon number two in your rankings. No. Want to know why? Why? Because Oregon has proved themselves over the years more than Clemson, and that's not fair to Oregon. See, I feel I like this year they've proved more because they beat Georgia. Whatever. You're done, by the way. So I'm ending I'm ending your, your time on the show. Goodbye. Right. Well, that was the wondrous Jake, the non-fake, chicken bake, wonder sake, liker. We we all love him too. He's so he's his vernacular, I mean it's just so many kinds of amazing. All right, uh, that basically ends it. Normal social stuff. Just, you know, go follow me on Twitter, at Carl underscore PM. Uh, Carl with a K, if you spell it with a C, I will somehow figure out and murder you. Uh, other than that, uh, National Sports is on Facebook. Go find us. We post about shows happening, so you don't have to come check Spreaker all the time. It'll come up on your news feed on Facebook. But thank you for listening. This has been College Football on Air. I will be back next week. Also, listen to Rookie's Roundup because I'm on there way too much. All right. See you next time.